Today, we have the opportunity to interview Karu Papritz. Karu published his first book at 21, graduated from UCLA Film School, and worked in Hollywood, but eventually wanted to step away from that life. He now works as a cowboy on a small ranch in Arizona. His, boy, his book, The Legacy Letters, is a bestseller, and he has had book signings in the most unique places, which we'll mm -hmm. definitely dive into, from signing books on a glacier to signing a book on the top of Mount St. Helens. How are you doing today, Karu? I'm doing fine, guys. Thank you for having me on your show. So first, let's talk about the book signings because that's just super <laughs> fascinating. Okay. Um, what motivated you to do that? And what's one other place that you would really like to do a book signing that you haven't gotten to? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I almost want to answer that question first, but I guess we'll go back and let everyone <laughs> play on there. So I called these uh, the first ever book signings. And part of the reason I wanted to do it was I wanted to walk the talk of my book, The Legacy Letters. Mm -hmm. um, and, and real quick, uh, The Legacy Letters is a series of letters, fictional letters written by a father to his kids that he'd never lived to see. And these letters become their practical, moral, and spiritual guidebook for the rest of their lives. So really, it's about living life to the fullest. And um, part, I love doing book signings. Um, I love meeting people. I'm a real people person. But I love to be outdoors. And so after a while, I was like, ah, uh, how do I get outside of book signings so I could be outdoors and then walk the talk of my book? Mm -hmm. And I just came up with this idea. And the first one we ever did was the first ever um, book signing on horseback. We yeah. did it. We did it digitally, meaning I uploaded the book and we okay. did it for the Barnes and Noble. OK. So, and it was the and it was the it was the horse I cowboyed on. His name was Boots. And so oh. we did a number of years ago and it was, it was great. We had a big old crowd for it since then, you know, we've done it, like I said, on top of Mount St. Helens, we had a book oh. signing. Uh, we did one, the first ever book signing post Cuba, uh, mm -hmm. Castro. That was incredible. I mean, they're just the Cuban people. We did a whistle stop tour from Orlando to Niagara Falls in 13 cities. Wow. Uh, yeah. That was the first ever modern day whistle stop book tour. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, it's and people ask that very question. Why are you doing this? And guess what? I get to answer and say, I get to walk my talk. I get to meet mm -hmm. people. And I get to walk the central theme of the book. So to answer your next question, where's the next one? Oh, sky's the limit. Let's say where I'd really love to do it. I don't know. I'm going to write Richard Branson, see if I can't jump on that. Uh, uh. that goal. They can get up there and do a book signing in space, but <laughs> the sky is not the limit. Yeah, the sky, oh, you're good. <laughs> that's awesome. That would be amazing. We we yeah. have a kiddo that is obsessed with space right now, and we just got to visit uh, NASA recently. And uh, one of the coolest things we've discovered is um, the ISS actually has a program where they have astronauts read children's books. Mm -hmm. And oh there's a whole YouTube series on yeah. it where their are children's books read from space. I love, I'm going to look that up. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. incredible. It's, and, no, it's and, really awesome. And Sarah, sort of to, to, to bookend, on, bookend, no pun intended, on that. <laughs> Um, there's another series of um, videos that I've done um, mm -hmm. called the I Love to Read series, mm -hmm. which sort of follows this and, and these, these first ever book signings in which I get kids. So, for example, we'll go back to my horse uh, boots and um, I'll take my book, The Legacy Letters. Where are you, Mr. Legacy Letters? Right here. And I'll be whoop, 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 there we are. And I'll be on the back of the horse and I'm like this <laughs> and I'm reading it and I'll say, you know what? I love to read but I love to ride. And I spurred the horse and off he went and he did a huge fart. Just a gigantic <laughs> fart. And, and I was like, oh, this is the first time he ever did it. So yeah. we did a second take and a third take. And guess what? We left it in. It's one of the most popular videos. The kids were like, oh, that's really funny. I so believe done, it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. but we've done them all over the world. We've done them in front of the Parthenon. We've done it in front of the Washington Monument. We've done a river rafting, fly fishing, uh, uh, on go-karts you name it and kids are always like why again yes. it's, sort of like, it's a backdoor way of getting kids to say well why does this guy do this who is yes. he right? mm -hmm. wow this is exciting to read a book this way okay so yeah so really really funny quick story so i did so my basically my my son and my wife are my cinematographers and directors mm -hmm. they've been doing these for years so they know oh i'm gonna do an i love to read they'll roll their eyes and they, they look. <laughs> so we were in chicago 
And you know, the, the bean there. The, so I was doing it in front of that and say, Hey, we're going to explore Chicago today. And I love to read. And so these kids, they were like, Oh, they were teenage middle school boys. And there was a bunch of them and they just snuck behind. They didn't photobomb me. I was, I was like, okay, that's good. And I kept doing what I was doing. And then afterwards, they um and I kept I told my son just like keep rolling keep rolling and they come up and they go hey what are you doing and I explained what I was doing said, oh that's really cool he said well so how many subscribers do you have and I said oh, about ten thousand and I got how many views do you have I I don't know a couple million and they go that's legit <laughs> and I've got it on tape nice I like, love it oh I made it I've got it it's just well, now you've got 10 more subscribers out. Yes. Oh, right. that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, good stuff. And all to promote reading, right? You guys are reading. Yes. Reader. yes. Yeah, yes. anything that gets kids inspired to read, I'm on board with. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things you're passionate about talking about is book bans. Um, so, and in particular, how book bans can actually encourage kids to read. Yeah, um, let's talk about book bands. Yes. Let's, let's talk about how exciting they are <laughs> and so, how they get. Yeah, <laughs> let's, just, let's just dive into that. Why okay. do you think it's an exciting thing? And a, Oh, a my God, gosh. I mean, talk about the gift of, of, of adults telling you mm -hmm. the most sacred thing that a, an adult can do is tell you what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yes. just, I mean, it just occurred to me one day, you know, I'm like, oh, book bans, oh, the book banners, oh, that they're, they're so mean, they're so nasty, they're so mm -hmm. not kind, right? Okay. And all of a sudden I go, no, this is the greatest advertising on the planet. Yeah. I mean, look, look at when they banned 1984, all of a sudden it went to the top of Amazon's bestseller list. And all of a mm -hmm. sudden I thought, wait a second, let's turn the lemon into to lemonade. And so- you guys out there that are doing the book banning, guess what? You are advertising books that most kids would never read. Come on, it is that simple. Would Seriously? never would never look at. Yeah. Never and look I'm, at. I'm proof of that because yeah. I experienced one book being banned. In in my educational experience, there was one book that was banned and it was wicked. And Wicked oh. came out at, you know, when I was in when I was in middle school, it was a big thing. And um it was hilarious because I am like, uh, I am a super people pleaser, rule follower, like to the T, I follow the rules. And they took it out of our private school library and they told our parents that we were passing it around and that we couldn't read it. So what did we do? We ended up covering it with uh, oh. the Odyssey, oh. which was the book oh, we were oh. reading at the time. <laughs> And then everyone in our class read the book and I never would have read it otherwise. Sarah, never would have talked the about best, it. The best story. And especially covering it up with the Odyssey. You yes. know, really yeah. high, hot on the the list of things we want to read as kids, right? Yes, uh, yeah. yes. And yeah. Wicked was behind it. I mean, yeah. I have to tell you, it's and and it sounds a little like taking a Playboy magazine into classroom and putting a yes. you know mad magazine or not mad like time behind it or something. Yes. Like, or I yeah. shouldn't say Playboy. I should say probably mad magazine back mm -hmm. in the day, you know, because that would have been if you got caught with Playboy, that would have been the end of the world. That <laughs> yes, time. yes. Right. Absolutely. But yeah, Mad Magazine. And that would have been like, oh my gosh. So I love that that's that example. And I really want, you know, as tongue in cheek as it is, I really want to pr promote this mm -hmm. out there to take the sting and the fire out of these people that think mm -hmm. this book bang is great. I'm going, please, more, more. And they're like, ah, ah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So along with that, so for kids, why do you think it is important to actually like actually read book banned books? Oh, to stick it to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> stick it to the man. I mean, it's 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 not the whole banned books thing. It's the whole idea behind squelching curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I love the idea of of the, the the whole oxymoronic idea of moms for liberty. Well, liberty is about you know there, and those are the ones that are going and say, oh, our kids shouldn't read this. Or and I, and I mm -hmm. hate to to poke somebody, but these guys are, are particularly effective at, mm -hmm. at, um, 
pushing down on librarians and pushing yes. down on people who quote unquote can't defend themselves. So I'm a big advocate of. Yeah, they have money on, and they have power. <laughs> yep. And taking on bullies. And these guys are mm -hmm. bullies. And I, I look at that and they say, oh, we're we're for liberty. I go, really? You're for liberty. You're for freedom. You're for what? For freedom to squelch ideas. That's freedom. This is not the way freedom works. And here's the other option to believe in your children that they have the ability to discern the difference between right and wrong, right and wrong. Yes. If you're teaching yeah. them, guys, have the liberty to decide. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the greatest liberty of all, right? That's mm -hmm. supposed to be the premise that what we're built on as a country. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, oh, no, wait a second. I know better. Mm -hmm. That is finger wagging 101, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I just say, let's let's put some mirth into this and really mm -hmm. and, and give it to them that way. And they'll be like, oh, I don't know what to do because anger and fear are the heart of what they do, right? I mean, this yes. is where you teach kids how to be fearful of these things. And I'm going, mm -hmm. hey, no, this is great. Come on, please mm -hmm. make more, more, put hundreds and hundreds of books on there mm -hmm. you know and that's really inspire kids to read then yeah. yeah. because right? it does it becomes a to read list yes like these are books to oh my gosh yeah. doesn't it 100 mm percent -hmm. yeah because yeah. so, like again, books they would never read right yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Mouse was put on um, yeah. book band list like a year or two ago, and I hadn't read that at that point. And I, I yeah. love graphic novels, so I was like, okay, I'll I'll check it out. And, you know, just because it got in the news, and I, you know, I went to the library, not there. Went to the half price books, not there. And it's not because it wasn't available; it's because they had like twenty copies, and they were all already checked out because mm -hmm. people, people oh. like me were like, oh, that's interesting. Let's go find it. And mm -hmm. half wow. price sold out of it, and. Oh, I uh, love to books, hear that. Library, I yeah, love so. so please put the legacy letters on a banned book list. <laughs> so go yes. back up to the top again. So <laughs> let's get it on a banned book list. <laughs> yes, let's. let's. <laughs> okay, for parents who are fearful about these, you know, uh, about these kinds of books and materials, as a father and an author, what are ways that you discuss um, difficult books or difficult topics with your with your kiddo? I think it's having moral courage, moral and mm -hmm. intellectual courage to be able to take on things that are fearful because really why are, let's, let's ask the fundamental question. Why are these groups banning these books? Mm -hmm. Because they fear change. Yeah. Guess what? Besides death and taxes, the only thing that you cannot undo is change. Change is yeah and parcel right yeah the whole life deal and so they're mm -hmm. just saying well we want to stop it in its tracks guys you can't you can't do this so i think the the when i say the moral and intellectual courage what i'm referring to is find that thing inside yourself that's able to say hey maybe there is something here but within this book let me read the book let me take the time to read it rather than just be fearful of it outright mm -hmm. and if if I'm all about letting kids fall appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You whatever age that might be. And and I guess the other thing that I don't know why parents don't get this. Guys, you can find this stuff out there. It is like mm -hmm. you want to find these books, you can find them easily online. They're yeah. just everywhere. So what? You what? You're gonna pull a physical book and you can't, oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and, and tips, I think it's just, it's again, back to trusting our children, mm -hmm. trust in them that they have a brain. And if you open up, my gosh, look at that great world that they have to offer. I've always, I have, I love having conversations with my son. Mm -hmm. Like just the other day I said, Hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this opinion comes back to my what the heck that is brilliant or really you're still five years old and you're in a 17 year old body uh -huh. <laughs> right? yes. Brain, yes. but i'm just constantly amazed at the at the, the 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 beauty and the curiosity and the different way of looking at the world i'm not afraid mm -hmm. of that but i'm also amazed at what they come up with yeah. so i think that's part of the courage to say hey i'm going to take a leap and ask my kids what they think about whatever it may be. And mm -hmm. if it's in a book, 
great, go for it. But I don't think they have that. I think it's just, let's close the walls and shut it down. Yes. But the world's not built that way anymore, guys. There, there's, there, I think as parents, there's a lot of fear over all of the uncontrollables and, oh, you know, well in life. Yeah. And there are a lot. And so it's so important to, we were just talking about this the other day with a friend to go into mm-hmm. your kids' worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and meet them where they're at. Like, for instance, this friend is getting into anime because mm-hmm. her teen son is into anime. And that's not something she would be interested in normally, but she's like, you know, we we have to have a relationship with our kids where we meet yeah. them with where they are at yeah. and what they are interested in so that we can have conversations, of, you know, yeah. with them Absolutely. when things come up. So that if, you know, if something does show up on their tablet that shouldn't be there, mm-hmm. they're, they're, you know, they're not afraid to go and tell you about it. Right. Um, yeah, that's right. Open. Co- yeah. So it goes both ways. Right. And I'm always like, talk, 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 communicate, communicate, communicate. Any chance mm-hmm. you're getting. Interesting one. I've been doing a lot of a series of interviews on AI and education. Mm. Oh. And one of them is plagiarism. And it's yeah. really fascinating. And with an, it was in a really interesting interview, uh, just like this, great give and take. And um, all of a sudden it dawned on me once again, one of these sort of um, um, paradigm shifts. And I thought, no, you know what? this is a great opportunity to talk about character because mm. it is easy to go on chat GPT and write this paper and it yeah. is easy to get away with it. Mm-hmm. And so then you get to talk about guys. I know you can get away with this, but who are you going to fool in the in the long run? I mean, it definitely yeah. hurts you in the long run, but in the short run, it's between you and yourself and that's called mm-hmm. character. And that's part of what you become as a person. So it's a really, it's a quote unquote teachable moment, but it becomes fundamental to who we are as human beings. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with the stuff that parents might not understand as well as the kids do. Like, Mm -hmm. right, because the kids are going to have a faster handle on AI than a lot of their parents will probably. And so especially when it comes to that stuff, instilling character is so important and not um, like we were talking about before, not fear. It's not inst- yeah. instilling fear in your kids. It's instilling the character. And there's a yeah. huge difference. Huge. No, well, well put. Yeah. So it's really interesting this, this trusting our kids and, mm-hmm. and like, Hey, let's at a certain point, the, the parenting part, I was really fascinated with like when my son turned 12 or 13 there was this sort of sea change inside that brain Mm -hmm. and I was like oh my gosh you know now (laughs) the cart is leading the horse yeah and I I was like I gotta get on this what did I do I read some books I talked to some people and Mm -hmm. that the horse got in front of the cart again but I had to modify I had to like Mm -hmm. all right what do you think fundamentally changed everything Mm-hmm. Now he's got skin in the game and conversation and where we're going and what we're doing. What do you think? And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. ama- one tip, right? Ask a kid, what do you think? And be amazed. That, and that's yeah. great. That is yeah. a fantastic parenting tip. Just yeah. asking for their opinion, making them feel like you value them and what oh, they think. Yeah. Huge, huge. Yeah. yeah. And actually yeah. valuing them and what they say. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> not right. just asking yeah. to pretend, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. <laughs> Do you have a favorite band book? Ah. Uh, no, I any band book is my favorite band book. <laughs> okay. Was that a great was that a was that a perfect political response? <laughs> I thought it was. Man, it like was. the one I want. <laughs> cool answer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, really, it is. I mean, seriously, come on, guys. I, it, you're, this is as old as Gutenberg, right? Oh, mm-hmm. we're going to shut this down. I mean, what I love something, it was in Florida that they did it. One guy came in and says, Well, if you're going to ban this book, we need to ban the Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Did you hear about yes. that? Yeah. 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 I was like, Okay, really? It what's totally good for the goose is sense. good for the gander, right? Yes. yes, there is yeah, you, there, everything that you're talking about banning is also represented in the Bible. Oh, Absolutely. you want you want salacious? Yeah, yes. Bible, right. Yeah, yes. you exactly, everything? exactly. Yeah, guys. yeah. Um, so that really, I and I love that. I mean, it's and oh no, it was in Utah that it happened. It was in a yes, Utah in Utah. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, and they banned it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, 
and this is part of again nobody's talking about you know needing to put 50 shades of gray in an elementary school library right Right. Like a lot of this is trusting the teachers and the librarians that are there that they will have age appropriate content, um, you know, for the kids. And, it, you know, as an educator, I'll say you can't just you can't just go in and be a school librarian because you want to like to get a degree as a librarian is a lot a lot, a lot of work, Mm -hmm. you know, and they have just as much experience and educational background as, as teachers do more so on books and book content. Proximity is so important and for our kids to learn things and books are a way for them to safely be in proximity to new things and new ideas um, and that's, it's just so important for development and education. And I, it just, it, it worries me and saddens me to hear, you know, in places like Houston and in Florida where classrooms are just going to be devoid of books. Um, it's just, you know, what, are, and, and my question to parents too, is what replaces that? Because what replaces that is, you, like we were talking about AI, um, videos, other, you know, there, yeah. there's things that, that replace that in the classroom. And that's not what we want. Mm-hmm. That's not what we want our kids to be interacting with all the time, all day long. We I want mean, we, them to have yeah. those physical page Abs, in yes. hand books. I love that. I, and boy, talk about, you know, better the devil, you know, if it's a book. Yes. Yeah, yeah online, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, just, just the ramifications of that are amazing with education. And I think too, Sarah, what you're talking about, I come from a long line of educators. Both my folks are teachers. I have my brothers and my friends and I, you know, I'm, I'm like so pro teacher, like do mm-hmm. not come in the way between me and a teacher because I'll turn into a pit bull. I'll take you. you know. <laughs> um, but I think this, the band books then goes to the bigger picture of how we view public schools and how we view, yes. you know, and, and all of that and, and education in general, like, well, we know better. I go, really? You know, I, yeah, it, look at what it takes to become a teacher. There's a reason good teachers mm-hmm. are good teachers. There's a reason education works. And, and yeah, you can go in there and, uh, you know, <laughs> I just, the whole uh, CRT. Critical race theory. Guys, nobody's teaching that. No. Nobody, but it's the boogeyman, right? Back again. Yes. If you're a change, and if we say you can't teach something that you're not teaching, excuse me? Really? Seriously? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, this is this is a doctoral thesis program yes. at Yale or something. Yeah, and it's about and, it's about legal stuff. It's about like uh, it was a lawyer who created this for legal yeah. purposes. And yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. We're struggling to teach division. We don't have time to teach. Like, you know, oh my gosh. Target. That's right. <laughs> there it is. That yes. is the line of all lines. We're struggling. To, we don't even have time for this. Yes. Oh. We don't have time to dig into the, to oh, you know, Lord, these boogeyman yeah. things that, yeah, that you think were, you know, digging yeah, into well, well bravo that is so well put that is so true <laughs> yeah well, it's just it. it's difficult yeah. um okay so as a parent what are some steps that you took or what are steps that you think other parents can take to really help their kids get into reading um read <laughs> read read right read in front of them take yeah. time out to read i mean 1000 million percent no matter it doesn't matter what age it is if you are the example right i mean we again walk your talk people walk yeah. your talk parents yeah. you know and it doesn't have to be this huge investment just i think we forget about the joy of reading right mm-hmm. go find a book make the book an event hey okay so we did this wonderful road trip this summer um We went from, uh, we're down in Arizona. So we did all the Western parks and we drove up to Grand Teton and Yellowstone, Montana, Mm -hmm. all the way around Seattle and back down. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the Northwest originally. So that was great being back up there. And and my son loves being outdoors. We kayaked and climbed and hiked Mm -hmm. and all this. But in the Tetons, my dad was a river ranger there. And I was brought up in the Northern part of the park. I actually went Mm -hmm. to a two room schoolhouse. Oh, neat. 
And the nearest library was Jackson yeah. Hole, which was 50 miles away. Yeah. Okay. Log Cabin Library. And oh, oh. when we went back there this summer, and I knew I've been back there several times and I knew it was gone, but I wanted to track it down to show my yeah. son. And they turned it in the library, is still, the log cabin is still there, turned it into something else, the city building. Mm -hmm. But I went in and they actually had a plaque that said this was the original library. Library. Oh, and, neat. And so I got a picture for it, but it reminded me how hungry I was yeah. to read. I mean, especially there wasn't a lot to do. I mean, we'd go hike and play and all this. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I checked out every Hardy Boy book imaginable. Nice. Yes. All of yep. them. And I read every single one of them. And mm -hmm. it was joyful. Yep. Joy, happiness in reading, guys. Yep. So yes. If there's Absolutely. one thing you can pass on to kids. Find something you like to read. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be this painful thing. I think in some ways, schools do make it like, uh, you know, reading mm -hmm. the Ulysses. Oh God, I'll be honest. Yes. Okay, I know we have to do as part of the canon yes. of, of literature, but really, yeah. okay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's one of that's a bone I have to pick with books. Is like, why are certain books considered classical? Yeah. Why do they have to keep being read? And why why are these books considered classical? You know, so, some of these were just unnecessary and not joyful <laughs> for sure. No, well, and Dante's but the problem. Inferno. There's a, yeah, exactly. So the problem is you have to inflict that pain upon mm -hmm. your progeny. Yes. So that they so that it can it can continue on. That's the yeah, so that it can keep going. Right. Because whoever breaks it, it's like, wait a second, I had to do that. You know? Yes, yes. Which is <laughs> a whole nother like... thing we could go down. Whole, whole other rabbit hole we could go down. Oh um, my gosh, that's so funny. I was listening to a parenting seminar the other day where they were talking about the fact that it's hard to tell kids to get off their tablets and phones if they all they see is you doing that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I think that's a great, you know, great advice about books is just to let them see you read and let them see you enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. How simple. And it doesn't have to be a lot. You know, yeah. 15 minutes a, a night or, and I go, and of course, when the kids are younger to read to them, oh my yes. gosh, what, yeah. what the beautiful and great joy of doing that. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't take that away as an experience of being a parent, but as you get older, um, and even the fact, uh, you know, when my son was younger, I said, well, we're going to go to the candy store. And and then we ended up at the bookstore. He goes, this is the candy store. I go, <laughs> this, is a, this is the candy store. So then it's a running joke. And I said, you can pick whatever book you want and I will buy it. You know, that is a place where we'll put money and then explore go. I don't care. Whatever you want to get, you know, yeah. to a limit. But, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so then it becomes this fun adventure. Once again, yeah. making reading and the act of reading fun. And that's mm -hmm. really what it should be. Whereas, you know, the absorb the the way that kids absorb information now is so much more fun because it's videos and everything. And, I'm not going to dis discredit all of them, you know, yes. um, yeah. some really cool stuff out there. But again, books are amazing for the way that they, the, 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 the world it creates in your mind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the ability yep. to think that way. Right. And that's, that's a whole way of, of rather than something being not forced on you, but this is the way the world looks in your mind, you can just create all these amazing mm -hmm. outlooks. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic absolutely. way of learning and thinking. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Enjoy reading, read with them. And it doesn't have to be a huge chunk of time. We're not asking you to take you know, two not hours out of every day or every yeah. night. Five or 15 minutes can make just such a huge impact yeah. on a kiddo. Yeah, that's walking that talk. You know, I do want to do something before we wrap up. I yeah, absolutely. I um, this is not just a promo, but this is one of the things in in my book. Um, mm -hmm. so these letters. So this is one of the letters in the book, and it's called "Your Pappy's Love of Books and All Appearances of the Mother Tongue," and it's several pages. But I wanted to. It's his just absolute love of books, and he wanted to pass that on. Absolutely. So, the intro is "Dear Little Ones," because he doesn't know their name. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole premise. So dear little ones, I am doomed to read books. If you haven't already figured it out, your pa can't leave well enough alone having to have my own last word on books. 
What a fine shake the gods have given you here to be born into a family of readers, to be amongst people who believe that to be alive, one must constantly keep learning, both through the working of one's hands and one's mind. I can remember quite a few times pounding the fence line far from headquarters and somewhere in the late and lazy afternoon scouting out a nice Aspen or Doug fur chair back and catching a book break. And then he goes in, he says, why read little ones? Uh, because it seems the world is most eagerly swan diving to the modern swamp of just get by perfection. I'm not responsible responsibility and all the lying truth tap dances that we so eagerly use to perpetually reassure ourselves that everything is good for us and that everything is okay. This illusion invading every aspect of our lives. Um, because anything that smacks of originality or promise or hope is immediately seized upon as a ploy, a subterfuge, or some universal conspiracy that might wake us up and halt our downward dive, reminding us of what it is to feel, question, and God forbid, think. And because thinking makes us think, how much more dangerous is that? Yet, what a magnificent hunger it is to read, little ones, to be aware that the more one learns, the more one appreciates one's own ignorance proving you are not afraid of knowledge or of changing how you look at the world, to be able to ask the timeless questions about salvation or free will, to God or not to God, gathering up knowledge like cords of firewood for the signal fire that must constantly burn hot and bright against the ever encroaching darkness of irrationality and ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's that's fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. There you go. There you go. There, yeah. you, go. there you go, guys. So that is the Legacy Letters by Karu Papritz. Um, thank you so much for hopping on today. We will link that below. Absolutely. Two questions before we leave. Yeah. One, Shoot. what are you currently working on? Currently, um, and actually it's the larger version of that book. So okay. it's called the Legacy Letters Complete. And I'm crossing fingers, we bring it out. Well, now we're into midsummer, so it'll probably be sometime next year. I don't know okay. quite. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And second question: What is a book that you have binged recently that you just couldn't put down? Binged. Oh golly, <laughs> I have to look here at my stack of books a mile high. We're, we are see. also stack of books people. Stack of books. <laughs> Uh, let's see this one, the world beneath their feet about, uh, climbing Mount Everest, Ooh, um, neat. uh, mountaineering madness and the deadly race to summit the Himalayas. And, oh my gosh, here's a, oh my, it's just a, it's a pile of mile deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we understand. We understand. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Nathan and Sarah, for having me on your show. And this is, this is such a treat. And I love to be able to converse with with uh, not only like-minded folks, but the fact that we're all questioning, we're trying to figure this out. And mm -hmm. the most important thing I think for us in, is believing that knowledge is power and power mm -hmm. is freedom and the freedom to choose one's own destiny. I think that's what books do. You know, they, yes. they, they yeah. show, you, show you how to live life to the best and fullest. So it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. Let's promote it. More banned books. Yes. More books. Yeah. <laughs> I will think of that differently after this. So Absolutely. thank you. Great. Yeah. Pass on the good word. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for talking to us today. We hope that, um, that you, uh, have a great week. All right. You guys too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.